So this is section uh, 2.1 for Math 151. And what we're going to do uh, first thing in this course is talk about kind of the steepness of functions. So, uh, for example, if I had something like y equals 2x minus 7, um, we know that that's a straight line. If I sketch it, it would have a y-intercept of negative 7 and a slope of 2. And so notice that this, this function has a constant slope. In other words, it's always changing at the same rate, right? Or, or if I had like uh, y equals negative one half x plus three, something like that, let's say. Y intercept of three, slope of negative one half, right? If I talk about the steepness, uh, the change in y and that change in x, that slope that we know as um, change in y over change in x, it's constant. It's always changing by the same amount. And in this case, it's negative one half. Or even if I said like y equals three, well, y is always three. <laughs> its slope is zero. It's, it's not, its value isn't changing. The interplay here is how is y changing as x is changing, right? That's what we talk about when we talk about slope. We kind of go, we do, go some change in x, some distance here, and then we make a ratio of that change in y and according to that change in x. And when it's constant, it, it's always the same, right? Like if I make my change in, in y um, really, really big on this one, you know, compared to, to what I did before, grab these two points, change in y, change in x, it's still going to always reduce to the same amount. And I could, you know, I could find the slope by just doing some, uh, doing some subtraction of my y's, doing some subtraction of my x's, and then writing my ratio, changing y over changing x. So it's kind of interesting than I think to let's look at a function that probably a little more interesting uh, than just these linear functions. I um, mean, for some reason, it was really important for me to, to pick a certain color um, other than the one that I have. So x squared plus x. So if I think about x squared plus x, we know that's going to be a, a parabola. And if I try to draw it by hand, you know, it's a, it's a little bit ugly, but we can make it work. Something like that. And then I'm going to fix this point on it. I'm going to say the point when x is 1, let's see, plug it in, 1 squared plus 1 is 2. The point 1, 2. And I'm going to think of this as the function f of x. And so I have this uh, point 1, 2. And notice if I start to grab other points on here, like let's say I said, uh, how, how is it to this point? That line has a certain steepness, but I went to this point instead, that line has a different steepness. Um, notice that if I pick two points on this function, they're going to have um, different steepnesses associated with them, different rates of change. So this isn't changing by a constant amount. In other words, if this change in x under this change in y is going to be different than a, a larger change in x over the change in y because it's not linear right it's not changing by the same amount each time so let's find a couple of those so let's say i have that that point on there one two i'm going to redraw this i'm going to stretch it out a little bit just change the scale so i know one two is a point on here because if i plug in one i get out two in other words f of 1 is 2, right? Plug in 1 for x, 2 comes out for y. So how about I'm going to compare that to this point that's at 3, when x is 3. So let me think about that. f of 3, if I plug in 3, 3 squared plus 3, 9 is 12. So the point 3, 12 is a point that's on here. So this parabola has this uh, curve in it. And what I'm doing is I'm finding kind of the, the average slope between those two points, this line right here. Now, this line right here is called a secant line. And I know that we have that word secant from trig um, leading us to a certain um, ratio in triangles. And we could, we could get at the connections between those as well if we wanted to. So that's the secant line. Secant uh, basically means to, to cut. This is the line that cuts the curve. And the secant line... If I think about the slope of the secant line, I have some change in x, some change in y, it gives me the average slope, the average change 
between those two. So uh, so let's do that. If I find the slope, change change in y over change in x. One one formula we could say is y two minus y one over uh, x two over x uh, minus x one x sub one, right? In other words, what's the change in y from twelve down to two? So twelve minus two. What's the change in x? Three back to one. Three minus one. Uh, twelve minus two is ten. Th three minus one is two. Five. So it looks like my uh, my secant line has a slope of five in that case. Okay. So that's that's all right. But notice, like if I pick had picked a different point, still have this parabola. I have this point one two. But what if I said I want to go through when x is two instead of when x is three? Right, like slide. I'm kind of sliding in a little bit closer. So if I plug in two, let's see that f of two, two squared plus two, four five six is six. So this is the point two six. Now my secant line here then feels like it might be a little less steep, and I could get at my my slope again here, uh, my change in y. So my y value is 6 down to 2, my change in x, 2 down to 1. Um, so this would be 4 over 1. So what I'm finding here um, is the slope of the secant line. I could say the slope of the secant line. And the way that I'm finding it, and, and it's an average slope between two points of the function. Um, if I averaged out the steepness there, you know, like how it's changing. It's kind of like what we do with like miles per hour, right? If we talk about the speed, speed's always an average. You're, you're never going like a constant speed. It's just kind of what it averages out to. So um, I've, I've been going, you know, what's the change in Y? And what's the change in X's? And um, if I want to step away from Y entirely, right, because I wrote this in function notation, I could say, um, let's say my, my first point is the point a f of a, in, in this, that's an a, <laughs> in this case that was the point 1, 2, and my other point, I'll call it the point x f of x. Right, so like when a is 1, I plug it in, f of 1 is the value 2, and so on. So my change in y would be my change in these y values. So it would be f of x minus f of a divided by change in x's would be x minus a. And again, I'm just doing the slope between those two lines. There's my, there's my change in x right there. There's my change in y right there. So that's how I can find, and actually if we just go that straight to that, we'll hold on to that. That's my average slope. I'm going to describe that in that way, I'm going to call it the average slope over the interval. So this would be average slope over the interval. And I'm going to describe the interval as in like in my x's. In this case, my interval is 1 to 3. Right? I started at 1 and I got to 3. So I would say 1 to 3. This is set notation, which means uh, from 1 to 3 inclusive. So um, this would be from a to x or from x to a just depends on direction you can you can write it whatever you want i'm going to just say from a to x so in this case my average slope over the interval one three is five started at one got out to three my average slope is five so let's take a look at a at a graph of this so for example there's my there's my x squared plus x function and there's that point one two and the first point that I did was the point 312. And notice the scale is a little funny, like this distance is 1 and this distance is 1. I just did it so we can get a sense of the, of the lines. And the first one we found was the slope of 5, right? Over 1, up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Over 1, up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's that slope. But as I, I shifted that A down to a 2, and I'm going to zoom into this a little bit, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. My slope became uh, 4. My average slope was 4. So these are, these are secant lines. Again, they cut the curve. 
what we can start to do is I notice I'm kind of centering myself on this point one two. I could kind of start to like get closer and closer to this point one two. In other words, like let's say I make my x value one uh, one point four or one point five or something like that. I'm going to make it one point five. Notice my slope's a little bit less. But what I can do, then my idea is, is um, to get at what's called the tangent line. I'm going to go back to the other screen to talk about a tangent line real quick. If I think about this graph right here, the tangent line would be the line that just touches the graph at the point. So at this point, one, two, I have some straight line, this nice tangent line, and it just touches it there. And what that gives me is actually what I can call the instantaneous slope. And I can try and spell um, instantaneous. So whereas the, um, the secant cuts the curve, the tangent just touched it, just touches it. So what we're talking about here is now, can I figure out the steepness of this line? Well, here is the problem. With everything else, I had two points my point x f of x and a f of a. In this case, I only have one point. But what I can do, and this is super brilliant, is I can start to make this a value, this value right here, I can get it closer and, cl or this x value, I can get it closer and closer and closer to this value here, this one. So I'm called it a here, but you know, uh, whatever, I can make it like a 1.2 or a 1.1. And do you see how, as I get closer and closer to it, it's starting to, it's even hard to see that it cuts the curve here. It looks like it's on the curve, it's not. It's cutting the curve, because one's straight and one's curved. And what I can do is get this smaller and smaller and smaller till I get it so close to it that I can essentially find the slope of it. And by find, I mean make a pretty darn good guess about it. So I'm gonna, um, Give us a little bit of space here and think about a way that we could we could do that. So my equation, um, and I'm, I'm going to just switch back and forth between f of x notation and y notation. We should be comfortable, we should be comfortable with, uh, with both those notations. Um, I want to know, instantaneous, what could be the instantaneous slope at 1, 2? In other words, if I can get my tangent line that just touches it at that point, what would the slope of that line be? And what we're going to do is we're going to um, get stuff closer and closer to it. So we already did like a point when x was 3, y was 12. It was the point 3, 12. And notice what we did to get the slope of the secant line. And this is the, the slope of the secant line through the point 1, 2 and through the point 3, 4. That was the first problem that we did. Uh, notice we went uh, y minus y. 12 minus 2 over 3 minus 1. 10 over 2 is 5. And then we slid it a little bit closer. X is 2. So if we plug 2 into here, we already did that one as well. This was 6. It was the point 2, 6. And the way that we got it, the slope m of the secant line, uh, y minus y, 6 minus 2, and it over x minus x. Change in y over change in x. 4 over 1 is 4. Um, and then we could, you know, like, let's say we're at 1.5. What would it be? So at 1.5, uh, I want to go 1.5 squared plus 1.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say in my calculator, 1.5 gets stored in x. So x equals 1.5. And I'll show you why I'm doing this in a sec. Uh, x squared plus x. Uh, 3.75. 5, 3.75. Again, we're, we're, we're creeping up on that 1. We're sliding this value closer and closer to the 1. So this would be uh, y minus y, 3.75 minus 2, over x minus x, 1.5 minus 1. And that's uh, 1.75 over 0.5 which is 3.5. And we can just keep getting closer and closer. Let's try 1.1. If I plug that in, um, it evaluates to, to 2.31. So y minus 1 
uh, y minus y, sorry, right, that y and that y, and then 1.1 minus 1, and I shift that in my calculator, I get about 3.1. And I can get keeping closer and closer, like if I go to the point 1.01, uh, 0 .01, I'll spare you the details there. But if I shove it in my calculator, it becomes 3.01. And if that's not close enough, I'm going to keep getting closer and closer and co closer. Like I could go like 1.0001. And this is going to get really close to 3. So my guess, I don't know it for sure right now, but my guess at the instantaneous slope at 1.2 is 3. I, my guess is that um, the slope of the tangent line would be 3. Because as... I make this change in x smaller and smaller. As I squeeze this in closer and closer, it looks like um, this slope, if I go over 1, 1, 2, 3. Boy, that's like this is pretty close, right? 1.001 1 .001 over 1, up 3. It looks like that slope is about 3. This type of thinking of having this like, um, process where we can slide the point we can we can get estimates for the for the steepness by sliding that point closer and closer to the other point without actually getting there because if we get there we don't have a line we only have one point two lines it lets us think this is probably about three like we get pretty darn good evidence for it so that's one of the things that i'm going to um have you have you practice is finding it for a uh, a secant line. I'm going to do another example here in a moment. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and then, um, then we'll do another example. All right, so we have this idea that we can get the slope of the secant line by going, um, we have some fixed point um, a f of a and then we take some other point on the curve and we can get that. And then we can get, um, I'm going to say x close to a to guess at the tangent line. And not just the tangent line, but the tangent line's slope, which we are calling the instantaneous. So here's our function uh, y equals x cubed minus 2x. And um, I want to know the instantaneous slope at the point 1, negative 1. Or at least know our guess for it. Our guessed. Guessed. <laughs> our guess for it. So we have some function. Like I, I don't even know what this looks like necessarily. I have some point on it. And again, I, I don't know that the point's there. It's just some curve. Uh, 1, negative 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... That is my, my, my a f of a spot and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this this x f of x i'm going to make a table of values that slides this x closer and closer to a and i'm going to see how the slope changes and if it starts to kind of settle down to the same spot so let's see x y um, let's start at two and we'll kind of work our way down 1.5 Closer and closer to one, and we'll see what happens with the with the slope. And remember to find the, the the slope of the secant line. I'm I'm definitely not going to have enough room the way that I the way that I wrote that. <laughs> I'm going to go f of x minus f of a. Well, let's see. I already know it's it's negative one over x minus a. I already know that's one. Right. This is the y value that I know. This is the x value that I know. So let's see, when x is 2, if I plug it into here, okay, and here's why, again, I, I did my, my calculator the way that I did it before. So my value was 2, so I'm going to say let, let 2 get stored in x. And then my function was x cubed uh, minus 2x. And so I get 4. So uh, when x is 2, y is 4. So I have the point. 2, 4. So my change in y is going to be 4 minus negative 1 over uh, 2 minus 1. 
which is uh, 5 over 1, which is 5. So this first slope happens to be uh, 5 as well, as far as I can tell. Um, so let me try it with a 1.5. I'm going to plug in 1.5 for x to get the y value that goes with it. And so now I can say 1.5 gets stored in x. So x equals 1.5. But I don't have to retype this. If I have a, at least with a ti, I can go second enter. That'll give me the thing I typed in before. And if I do it again, there's that. And I can just hit enter and it'll evaluate it. Uh, 0.375. So the point is 1.5.375, and I'll keep going from there. So my change in y, 0.375 minus negative 1 over x minus x, 1.5 minus 1. And this is uh, 1.375 over uh, 0.5. And I can keep on going with this. So I would plug that, that 1.1 into that function. So I have this. Remember, y minus y over x minus x. And I could keep plugging these things in. All of a sudden, I got a lot more room than I had before. If I plug in the, the 1.01, 1 .01, you can keep going to fill this in. I just want to show what happens with these uh, with these slopes. I'll write what the slopes end up. Remember, the first one is 5. The next one is 2.75. The next one's uh, 1.31. This one ends up being 1.0301. If I plug in the 1.001, Again, remember, I'm getting closer and closer to 1 as an x value. I get 1.003001. I'm pretty convinced this thing is settling down to 1. If I'm not convinced, I could get even closer, right? I could plug in something like, like that and see where it ends up. And uh, just, just for the record, my calculator says that that gives me pretty darn close to 1. So from this table, as I slide this point, closer and closer to the point I'm trying to find the instantaneous slope at, the slope of the secant line seems to converge to 1. So I'm going to say the slope of the tangent line, I'm, my best guess is that it's 1. So this idea um, helps me find instantaneous change, find like how fast something is changing at a certain point. Uh, I'm going to do another kind of a similar equation. S of t is uh, 150 minus 4.9 t squared. So I'm going to give this one a little bit of context. This is a this is an object that's that's falling. Um, S of t will be the height in meters, and t is time in seconds. So the input is the time. So after one second, if I plug in a one, um, this t then um, it evaluates to S of t, the output would be how high it is after that amount of time. So I'm just going to do this with some intervals. So my interval will be like uh, 2 to 3, uh, or I'll do an interval 2.9 to 3, and I'll do an interval that's 3 to 3.001. Now these intervals, these are x values. So if I go back to that original idea, those intervals are a change in x value. So the first one, the, the 2, 3 one, that would be the x value here is 2, the x value here is 3. What's the slope of the line when that, when that interval is 2 to 3? Yeah, that's, that's a little bit different than we set it up over here, but it's a way that we're going to think about it. And what am I finding when I find the average velocity over time. So if I drop something, if I think about time and height, it's going to drop faster and faster, right? Because gravity's pulling on it. If this is the height, is that even legible? If this is the height, change in height divided by change in time, that's going to be how fast it's falling, the velocity of it, right? So this, this change in position is velocity. 
Um, and, and velocity and speed are a lot alike. It's just speed usually doesn't have a sign, right? Isn't positive or negative. Um, so, so let's do this. So two to three. So let me think about how would I find the slope of this? I know slope is change in y over change in x, which would be f of some value. Like those are the y values and those are the x values. So in this case, these are both x values. So this would be from two seconds to three seconds. So if I think about my average velocity here, those are like this. And then what I would need to know is um, what would the height be at three and what would the height be at two? What I can do is I can shove those into my calculator, right? Like, like 150 minus uh, 4.9 times 3 squared. So numerically, this would be like 105.9. And the f of 2 would be um, the same thing, but um, 150 times 4.9 uh, minus 4.9 times 2 squared. And if I, if I do this one, that would be negative 24.5 over 1. So here, the average velocity is negative uh, 24.5 meters per second that's the rate at which it that's the average rate it falls at from the second to the third second in other words if this is two whatever the output was at two and this is three whatever the output was at three a sloppy f of three that's the slope of that line so what we can do then is the same idea but with these values right from 2.9 seconds to three seconds notice how that gets it really close to the three change in y over change in x. So that would be the change in y over the change in x. And I'm going to evaluate these in my calculator. Again, f of 3 would be 150 minus 4.9 times 3 squared. Uh, 2.9, right? 150 minus 4.9 times 2.9 squared. So let me let me deal with that. And so here it's about uh, 28.91. And if I do that, that same thing with this next one, the 3, uh, from 3 seconds to 3.001 seconds. I get this value, which is about uh, negative 29.4. So notice, like, as this interval gets smaller around 3, right? 2 to 3, 2.9 to 3, 3 to 3.001, this value seems to start to converge at this 29.4 so, negative 29.4. So this is a guess, but we'll say... We think it's probably about negative 29.4 and we're talking meters per second. Again, uh, as we make this interval smaller, but you know, around the value at three, um, the instantaneous value, this would be at time three, right? Because notice we are honing in on that three. The speed would, would be about negative 29.4 meters per second. That's, that should be the rate at which it's falling. So um, what I'd like you to think about while we're doing this is we're finding these secant lines over and over. We're sliding this point closer and closer to that point to give us a reasonable guess for the tangent, for the slope of the tangent line. And the relationship between um, the tangent line and secant line when we have context of like height and time is position being slope of the secant line and velocity being slope of the, of the tangent line because it's the how fast the position is changing. Um, one other thing I really want to point out, if you have anything that has any trig in it, make sure that you are in radians. Um, radians are our trade. Um, so get out of get out of using degrees unless it specifically says degrees. Always assume radians. All right, uh, give the assignment a try. Post any questions that you have in the in the questions forum or message me. And, uh, and good luck with this one.